Welcome, welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back. How are you? Are you ready for action? Good evening. Good, good evening. Good evening. Welcome back. How was your weekend? Thank you. How we are fine, teacher. How are you today? I feel excellent. I feel so good. I feel happy. I feel motivated. I am ready, 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 ready. Jesus is in my life. Jesus That's is good. good. So I am. Jesus great. is the most important. Jesus is the most important. That's right. If you don't have Jesus, you don't have anything. You don't have nothing in your life if you don't have Jesus. That's right. Only existing. Yeah. All right. Uh, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to go ahead and jump into it. Hello, Al Alain. Hello, Carlos. Hello, Janet. We're going to go okay. ahead and jump in. I would like for Hi, us... teacher. Hello, hello. Welcome. We're going to be moving on. <laughs> and we're looking at section 2.0. Learn how to describe problems in English using countable and non-countable nouns. By the end of this class, you will learn how to describe problems in a city using phrases like too many, too much, less, fewer, enough, and more. You'll also learn about common non-countable nouns, including water, oxygen, English, traffic, milk, Thank you. soccer. Good night. See you tomorrow, teacher. Bye. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay. Uh, too much, less, fewer, enough, and more. You'll also learn about common non-countable nouns, including water, oxygen, English, traffic, milk, soccer, sunshine, etc. And understand how to tell if a noun is countable or non-countable. An English oral comprehension audio exercise is included. So I would like for us to take a couple of minutes and we are going to listen to the video and then we're going to have a conversation. In your city. And as you're answering these questions that I just posted, I want you to identify the nouns that I'm using. So tell me whether the nouns that I'm using, whether they're count or non count. So for example, traffic is the first one. Is that count or non count? Uh, police officers, is that count or non count? Uh, buses, is that count or non count? And pollution, is that count or non count? <laughs> Hi everyone, by the end of this class you'll be able to describe problems in a city. You'll do this by using count and non-count nouns. Let me give you a quick example of this. There's too much traffic in my city because there are too many cars. You'll also listen to an audio program which illustrates how this topic is used. First of all, nouns. What are nouns? Well, nouns are people, places, or things. Pretty much everything that you see around you is considered a noun. And what do we mean by count nouns? Well, count nouns are simply all of those things, people, places, or things that you can easily count. So for example, when we think about cars, subway lanes, buses, those are nouns that you can easily count. Let me give you an example of other nouns that we can easily count. For example, we can count things like a pen, a computer, a bottle, a spoon, a desk, a cup, a television, a chair, shoe, a finger, flower, camera, stick, balloon, book, table, etc. Another thing that I would like to mention about count nouns is that we can easily 
change these count nouns into plurals by simply adding an S. Now let me point out what non count nouns are. And just like I mentioned previously, count nouns are all of those things that you can count. People, places, or things that are easy to count, such as cars, subway lanes, or buses, like we see on the example. Now, with non-count nouns, what that means is that we're going to look at nouns that are difficult to count. So, for example, in our chart, we see things like traffic, things like pollution, public transportation, parking. Those are a little bit difficult to count. So let me give you more examples of some of the things that cannot be counted quite easily and therefore we consider this non-count nouns. So if we think about things like water, wood, ice, air, oxygen, English, Spanish, these are subjects, traffic, furniture, milk, wine, sugar, rice, meat, flour, things like sports, soccer, all of these things are non-countable. They cannot be counted easily. Another thing that's important to mention about non-count nouns is that we don't add an S in order to ch change them to plural. They, they do not have a plural form. Next, what I would like to do is I would like to play an audio program for you so that you can listen to the perspective of some people about their city and remember that the goal of this class is to learn how to express problems that exist within a city. For example, there's too much traffic in my city because there are too many cars. And we want to use count nouns and non-count nouns to express uh, those ideas. So we're going to listen to that and I will have you answer a couple of questions about that. The buses are old and slow, and they cause too much pollution. In cities with less pollution, people are healthier. There are too many cars. All the cars, taxis, and buses are a danger to bicyclists. There is too much traffic. There should be fewer cars, but I think that the biggest problem is parking. There just isn't enough parking. The last thing that I would like for you to do now is to answer some questions about your city. And what I'd like for you to do is to tell me whether there is a lot of traffic in your city. So I'm going to ask the question, is there a lot of traffic in your city? Are there many buses in your city? Are there enough police officers in your city? Is there too much pollution in your city? And as you're answering these questions that I just posted, I want you to identify the nouns that I'm using. So tell me whether the nouns that I'm using, whether they're count or non count. So for example, traffic is the first one. Is that count or non count? Uh, police officers, is that count or non count? Um, buses, is that count or non count? And pollution, is that count or non count? All right. Now I would like one volunteer. Let me have one. Okay. Uh, un momento, guys. Vamos a hacer algo rapidito. Eh, sus empresas me están pidiendo que tome asistencia porque quieren controlar quienes están recibiendo las clases y quienes no. Así que vamos a tomarle una foto. Esto no es de parte de inglés corporativo, esto es de parte de sus empresas. Así que ellos lo solicitaron que quieren saber quienes están recibiendo las clases y quienes no. Así que por favor pongan una gran sonrisa, como que si están así bien contentos, así bien cheese, así que happy. Ahí está. Right, eso es básicamente, ellos quieren saber quiénes están conectando, quiénes no. Así que ojo con eso, los animo que se conecten todos los días porque aparentemente 
eh, los están monitoreando. Eso me acabo de dar okay. cuenta. Eso vino, ese mensaje me vino el día de hoy. Es algo nuevo para mí. Así que ojo con eso para que no vayan a caer en ninguna falla. All right. Now, uh, let me have one volunteer, please. Let me have one volunteer. That exists within the city. For example. Okay, here. Who? Uh, here. Okay, go ahead. Quien dijo here? Alain? They do not have a plural. Yeah. Form. Okay, ask Mr. Santos the question. Is there a lot of traffic in your city? Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, I used to live in San Salvador, uh, but now I don't live in San Salvador. I live in Santa Elena, Usulután. So here there is not much traffic. The traffic is very minimum and I love it. Mm -hmm. I enjoy nature. I enjoy the silence. I enjoy the privacy. Believe me, I don't miss San Salvador at all. Okay. Next question. Is there too much too much pollution in your city? Uh, actually, here, here, maybe in Usulután because it's a lot of people, it's a lot of traffic. But here in my area, I live in Santa Elena, so there aren't buses in this area. Uh, there's a lot of trees. We have a lot of mango trees, marañón trees. Nancy trees, avocado trees, chickens, roosters. Uh, when I used to live in the city, I used to wake up to this. Ah, 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 baby, baby, baby. Uh, but here, I wake up to this. <coughs> So I prefer this uh, this uh, wake up, natural wake up. Okay. Next question. Are there you no know, police officers in your city? Uh, well, actually, since I've been here, I have not seen I haven't seen any police officers. Not even one. So not, I have seen nobody. not no police officers. Uh, last time I saw oh Sunday Sunday, they were yeah. dis distributing the the bags with the beans, eggs, sugar, rice, and I saw two uh, army soldiers, but I haven't seen any. Any, Any other police officers? No, 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 no. It's very, very calm, very nice. Okay. Okay. Now, what I would like for you to do is I want you to practice the questions. One student is going to ask the questions and the other student is going to respond to the questions. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. yeah. okay. You will have five minutes to ask and respond to the questions. Let's go. Uh, 
No las encuentro aún. Fíjese que es poquito lo que escucho. No sé si es el por el internet o hola, qué, pero. Hola, 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 hola. Hoy sí escucho un yo, poquito mejor. Yo te escucho muy bien. Ah. <risa> Sí, ahora ya escucho un poco mejor. Ok. Porque si casi no escuchaba. Ahorita te, te voy a... Ok. Hey. Eh, I, have a, I, have a, I have a question with you. Eh, is there a lot of traffic in your city? Um, Is there a lot of traffic in your city? Hay este mucho tráfico en tu ciudad. Sometimes is a uh, sometimes in in the central a, of the city. Ajá. Uh -huh. Is a is a lot of cars, uh -huh. but is not for every day. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Well, and, and then there are many buses, buses in your city? Right now, not because, because. It is, because it's, it, it is the. It is. Shop. It is uh, public transportation in this moment. Okay. It isn't. Okay. And are there enough enough police officers in your city? Um, no. No police? Uh, yes, but it's not. It's not too much. Oh, really? Uh -huh. Is there too much pollution in your city? Um, not too much. Not too much. Okay. Okay. And in this case, when when the cuando es con, eh, con, eh, contable is uh, tienes que utilizar many, many, and, uh, no many police office police officers. Uh, y cuando es, cuando no es cuando no se puede contar como la polución, el aire, el agua, entonces ahí utilizas much. Uh, okay, thank you. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Esa es la diferencia entre una y la otra. Y is there es cuando eh, eh, digamos te, te utilizas cuando digamos cuando no son contables como is there a lot of traffic el tráfico no es contable ¿va? Sino que es una, uh -huh. entonces utilizas is there y cuando es contable utilizas are there are there many are there many buses in your city los buses si sí son contables uh -huh. ahí si decís no hay muchos entonces no Uh, no are no are there many buses in my city. No aren't many buses in the city. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Porque digamos ahí dice son como contables. Uh -huh. uh, well, Y bueno, en el mismo caso es cuando utilizas, en la otra pregunta que te hace, ¿Is there too much pollution in your city? 
Entonces, ahí utilizas is, is there y utilizas match, porque la polución no la puedes contar uno, dos, tres, sino que, eh, digamos, y, y como el otro que te dice, are there an now pol police officer, police officer in the city. Entonces, ahí sí utilizas are there, porque esos sí son contables. Los policías los puedes contar. Ajá. Este, creo que eso estaría bien. Con eso. <risa> este, esta unidad sí va a estar un poco más difícil. Si sí es de, como de, 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 de estudiarla un poquito más, porque eso de los contables y no contables eh, es bastante confusa. Sí, es cierto. Está bastante confuso. Hello. Hello. All right. Let me have two volunteers. Two volunteers. Hello. Raise your hand. Those voluntarios. Two volunteers. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Two volunteers, please. Okay. ¿Quién levantó la mano? No. Levante la mano en la plataforma. Mm -mm. ¿Cómo se levanta la mano en la plataforma, chicos? Nos vamos a participants. Le van a aparecer tres puntitos. Y ahí le va a dar clic donde dice levantar la mano. Se va a ir a participants. Le van a aparecer, ahí está, Alain. Alain, ¿le puede explicar a la clase cómo levantó la mano? Aquí en participantes uh -huh. se abre una una ventana y ahí está en la parte inferior dice subir la mano ok quisiera que todos levanten la mano en este momento todos vamos a practicar cómo levantar la mano ok me falta ana me falta gerardo me falta Herman Reyes. Ok. Ana no ha levantado la mano. Herman Reyes no ha levantado la mano. Ok. Herman levantó la mano. Solo me hace falta Ana. Ok. Ya estuvo. Ok. Todos bajen la mano. <coughs> Okay, now let me have Alain and, ¿Quién fue el otro que levantó la mano? Eduardo. Okay, Alain and Eduardo levantaron la mano primero. So Alain ask the questions, Eduardo respond to the questions. Alain okay. ask the question, Eduardo respond to the question. Okay, first question. Is there a lot of traffic in your city? Uh, not really. The streets are very clean this time because the coronavirus. <laughs> okay. Second question. Are there many buses in your city? Uh, not too many, but, but some buses Sí, yes, uh, not too many, sí, really. Is there too much pollution in your area? I live in Metapan. No, it's very, uh, here it's very clean because we have a lot of trees. 
Okay. Are there you no know, police officers in your city? I see some police as well, but no, no, uh, the number we have, we need, we need it here. Some police only. Okay. All right. Applause for Eduardo and Alain. ¿Saben cómo aplaudir? ¿Ven la manita que tengo yo? Ahí está, ¿ven? Eh? That's right. La mía es más negrita que la de ustedes. No sé por qué. All right. Good job, guys. Okay. Now, what we are going to do is I would like for you guys to hear in the discussion forum. Se van a ir donde dice post, add a post. Y van a escribir cuatro oraciones. For example, traffic is non-countable. Police officers is countable. Buses is countable. Pollution is non-countable. Así, así como las tengo yo acá, igualito las va a hacer usted en la discussion forum de la plataforma. Donde dice title, le va a poner su nombre, así como he hecho yo, y después va a escribir las oraciones. Tienen tres minutos para hacerlo. Tres minutos. Los voy a poner en parejas para que se apoyen y de allí lo vamos a ver en grupo.
Hi, Sandra. Hello. Hi. How are Hello. you? Hi. Hello, Eduardo. Thank you. Hello, Janet. Teacher. Hi. <laughs> um, uh, I want to say you something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> My husband is from Sulutan. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I love Osulutan. It's beautiful. Yeah. I like I like <laughs> Santa Elena is beautiful. I like I prefer I prefer here than the city. The city is too much traffic, too many people, a lot of contamination. What part oh, yeah. what what part of Usulutan is your husband? It's from uh, Usulutan. <laughs> oh Usulutan, Usulutan, the city yeah. city. Oh, yeah. okay. uh -huh. Yes. His mother is living over there oh okay ah oh, okay yeah my, my my son lives here really yes that... okay okay guys let's mm -hmm. move on we're going to be looking at the 2.2 knowledge check number one which of the following options is not a countable noun? Parking. Number two, what are some examples of non-countable nouns? Water, Water wood, and air. Number three, what are some examples of countable nouns? Desk, Desk. Camera. camera, book. Number four, Desk. why do the buses cause too much pollution? The buses cause too much pollution because they are old. Oh. Number five, why is there too much traffic? Because there are too many cars. Now, 2.3, lesson objective. Continue building English conversational skills by learning English expressions of quantity. By the end of this class, you will be able to discuss transportation services using adverbs of quantity, including enough, many, fewer, and more. Practice incorporating expressions of quantity in phrases such as there aren't enough buses or we need more public transportation. There should be fewer cars and there isn't enough parking downtown. Listen to the expressions of quantity. Listen, please. Should be last, and you either include count nouns or non count nouns to give your opinions or to talk about your city. Hi everyone, by the end of this class you'll be able to express problems that exist in a city. For example, there are too many cars in my city. There's too much pollution in my city. We need more public transportation. We need more police officers. You'll also learn how to use adverbs of quantity. For example, too many, too much, fewer, more.
In our previous class, we learned about count and non-count nouns. And that is what's going to help us to understand when we're going to use too many. For example, in this case, we have cars. Uh, we are going to use too many. And when we're going to use too much. For example, in this case, we have a non-count noun, and therefore, we're going to use too much. So let's now try to make sense of this by looking at this chart. Let me talk a little bit about making sense of this statement here. There are too many cars. And I'm also going to talk about making sense of this next statement. There aren't enough buses. Let me present the structure now. In order for us to make sense of there are too many cars, we need to understand the following rule. Uh, and that is that we're going to have there. And by the way, this can be the subject of the sentence. It doesn't necessarily need to be there. Like, for example, we can say, we have too many cars. And let me go ahead. As I am talking about that, I'm going to go ahead and write the examples now. So let me write the example that is there. There are, whenever you see the expression too many, that means that there is a problem, that we have too much of too many. In this case, there are too many cars. OK, um, and just so that we keep the pattern there, I'm going to go ahead and change the colors um, there. And that follows the verb to be. And then we have too many. And that's how we make that expression. There are too many cars. We can also say we have too many cars. What I would like to do next is to make sense of that last statement that you see there. There aren't enough buses. And this is whenever we are missing something, right? We need more of something like, for example, we need more buses. Maybe we need more police officers. We're going to use the expression, there aren't enough. And then that's going to follow a count now. So we use there plus aren't. And then this is going to follow the expression enough. And what else can we say? Well, we can say there aren't enough police officers. What's another problem in your city? Well, maybe there aren't enough parks. What I would like to do now is to talk about how to give opinions about what is needed in a city. And so I want to make sense of the example, there should be fewer cars. That's an opinion about what I think we need in my city. So in order for us to form that idea, we need a subject. Then we need should. After that, we're going to need the verb to be. And this is followed by either fewer or more. And then it's going to be followed by a count now. So let me give you an example of that right now. For example, we could say there should be fewer cars, which is the example that we have here. We have a subject. This could be in the form of there, as it can be in the form of another pronoun or another kind of subject. Uh, then it's going to follow the model verb should. And then this is, will be followed by a verb. It can be the verb to be, but it can be other verbs as well. And then the um, adverb quantities, such as fewer or more, and then whatever count noun that exists. There should be fewer cars. We should have more police officers. And these are opinions that we want to express about what is needed in a city. And the other example that I haven't talked about, we need more subway lanes. That is kind of like a stronger opinion. So it's no longer a suggestion, if you will. Um, but it's it's something similar. And so um, it's quite similar. We're going to say we. The only difference is that we don't include a model bird, right? We need more. And in this case, subway lines. What I would like to do next is explain 
how to describe problems that take place in a city, but now I'm going to do it with non-count nouns. And so what I would like for you to notice is the difference, right? We, we discussed how to express problems with count nouns. For example, we said there are too many cars. And what I want you to notice is that with non-count nouns, we're going to use different words. So for example, instead of too many, we will use too much. Instead of fewer, we will use less. Um, we can use more for count nouns as well as for non-count nouns. So as you can see the example there, we need more subway lanes. That's a countable. We need more public transportation. That's a non-countable. Um, and enough is the same way. There aren't enough buses. There isn't enough parking. Um, the only thing that will change in this last example is that we're always going to treat no countable nouns as singular, even though we might be talking about uh, more things. So let me try to present some structure there so that we can try to make sense of the examples here. So for example, we can say there is too much traffic and what I would like to do is make sure that I'm using the appropriate colors that I chose and there's our example we have a subject that is followed by the verb and then this is followed by either too much or enough and then we have a non count now so the example there is too much traffic let me give another quick example there is too much, and I'm going to say pollution. Um, and what I would like to do is give an example there. Um, there isn't enough parking. And the last thing related to this topic is how to express opinions that you have about what should be included in a city. And the only difference now is that we're going to include some sort of model verb, okay? So we have our subject is there, then we include should be. Uh, guys, guys, todos escuchan bien o escuchan cortado? I listen good. Everybody can hear well? Yes, teacher. Uh, okay. Uh, I listen good, yes. Teacher. All right, Carlos Calderón, me imagino que es su internet y por eso es, le escucha así. Uh, and in this case, we're going to use less and we're going to say pollution. Um, I'm going to change these words now and instead of too much or not enough or, or enough, I will use there should be less or more. Okay, because what we want to do now is we want to express an opinion. So we're going to have a subject. Uh, the subject is there. It's going to be followed by the model should. should, and then this is going to be followed by some kind of verb. It doesn't have to be the verb to be, it can be something else. And then either less or more, and whatever non count that exists. The last thing that I would like for you to do is to practice the concepts that we learn. I want you to practice giving expressions about what problems are in your city. And I want you to use a combination of both count nouns and non-count nouns. And remember that if you are going to use count nouns, you're going to use expressions such as too many, fewer, or more. And if you're going to use non-count nouns, then you're going to use expressions such as too much, less, or more. And so here's a quick guide of what I would like for you to do. I want you to tell me about your city. So a quick example, the city should provide more. We have too many. There's too much. There isn't enough. There should be fewer. There should be less. And you either include count nouns or non-count nouns to give your opinions or to talk about your city. All right, now what we're going to do is continue on the next activity and we're going to check 
2.5, which one is correct? Number one, which is correct? There aren't enough police officers in my city. My city. There aren't enough police officers in my city. Number two. There is too much traffic. So the government needs to build more highways. More highways. Mm -hmm. Number three, which is correct? There is too much pollution in my city. Number four, complete the statement. I can't sleep at night. There should be less noise. Yes. And the last one, complete the following statement using quantity expressions. Too many, fewer, more. Make sure not to use capital letters or periods. The government needs to build more highways. Now we're going to be looking at, can you tell me indirect questions? Indirect questions. I need some more information, if you don't mind. Do you know how much the bus costs? By the end of this class, you'll be able to ask and answer indirect questions about a city or a new place that you might visit. For example, you'll be able to make the following questions. Could you tell me where the bank is? Do you know where the nearest ATM is? Do you know where the restrooms are? Can you tell me how often the buses run? Do you know where I can catch the bus? Before I begin to explain the grammar involved, what I would like to do is I would like to play an audio program which illustrates how this topic is used. And so what we're going to do at this point is we're going to listen to a conversation and we're going to listen to different questions that are asked about a city. Your task is to listen carefully and I will ask you questions at the end of the audio program. Excuse me. Could you tell me where the nearest ATM is? There's one upstairs, across from the duty-free shop. Great. And do you know where I can catch a bus to the city? Sure. Just follow the signs for transportation. Okay. And can you tell me how often they run? They run every 20 minutes or Excuse me. It's me again. I'm sorry. I need some more information, if you don't mind. Do you know how much the bus costs? It's $20. You can buy a ticket on the bus. $20? Wow. Well, a taxi costs about $50. Hmm. Okay. And do you know where a bookstore is? I'd like to get a guidebook. Go upstairs and turn right. You'll see one on your left. Thanks very much. Have a nice day. You too. Let me present some structure at this time. What we want to do in this class is we want to learn how to change direct questions into indirect questions. And the reason that we want to do this is because it's a lot more polite to use indirect questions. So for example, if I say, where's the bank? It's less polite than if I say, could you tell me where the bank is? And what we're going to learn is we're going to learn some rules that we're going to follow in changing these questions from direct to indirect questions. We're going to learn how to do it with the verb to be, and we're also going to learn how to change 
WH questions with either do or did. Now let's try to make sense of this whole concept here. What we want to do is we want to be able to turn direct questions into indirect questions. And let me propose a formula on how to do this, if you will. So we want to turn the question, where is the bank, into an indirect question. And the way that we'll do that is we will use some kind of polite model verb. So in this case, could you tell me? All right, and then this is going to be followed by a WH word. In this case, it happens to be where, but it could be any other WH word. For example, it could be what time, how often, when, etc. Any kind of WH word is what we're going to include here. So could you tell me, and in this case, I will ask where. This is going to be followed by the subject. So in this case, it happens to be the bank, where the bank, and then finally, we're, we're going to include the verb. So in this case, could you tell me where the bank is? And just so that we follow the pattern that I'm proposing here, I'm going to go ahead and play with the colors for now. Now, let's try to make sense of that second question that you see there towards the bottom. Where are the restrooms? That's the direct question. What we want to do is we want to turn that question into an indirect question. And you can do that in different ways. For example, you can do that by asking, do you know? Okay, or using another model verse. So in this case, I'm going to propose and using this um, polite way of doing it. Okay, so I'm basically just going to copy that so you can see that it's the, basically the same pattern that we're following. We have, could you tell me? And that follows a WH word. So in this case, where? Okay, so the subject is what's going to change now. And instead of saying the bank, we're not going to say the restrooms. And then it's going to follow the verse. So in this case, it happens to be that since restrooms are plural, then we're going to use the verb to be are instead of the verb to be is. And um, well, um, the phrase here could change, as I mentioned, just like we have it there on the book. Do you know where the restrooms are? And basically, we're going to follow the same pattern for the questions that you see towards the bottom. The only difference here is that we're no longer using the verb to be. We're using other verbs. And we could be talking about the present. We could be talking about the past. And that's what it means by either do or did. So let's try to make sense of those as well. So in this case, it's a similar pattern, if you will. How often do the buses leave? OK, what we want to do is we want to be able to change this question into an indirect question. And again, we can use the same pattern that you see here. So for, I'm just going to go ahead and copy this previous one that you see there so that you can see that uh, nothing changes or just a few things will change. So in this case, could you tell me? I mean, that's similar thing. Could you tell me? And we're going to use uh, the uh, WH question. So in this case, it's going to be how often. All right. And then that is followed by the subject. So in this case, the subject is the buses. And then that is followed by the verb. And so in this case, it's no longer the verb to be, but now it's the verb leave. How often do the buses leave? Could you tell me how often the buses leave? Let's try to make sense of the other questions that you see there towards the bottom. So in this case, what we want to do is we want to use a polite way of asking. So you can ask in the form of, could you tell me? Do you know? Can you tell me? Um, and then it just repeats itself with do you know. So in this case, we're going to use do you know. That's the second question there. Do you know what time the bank opens? So let me go ahead and write that example now. Do you know? That follows the WH word. So in this case, is what time? Then that follows the subject. And one thing that I want you to notice here is that 
in our indirect question, we remove the auxiliary verbs. So we don't include does or do. It no longer exists in our indirect question. Do you know what time the bank opens? And the other thing that happens here is that the verb in this case will need to have an S. And that's because since we don't have an auxiliary verb and the subject of the verb is singular and we're talking in the present, therefore we need an S as you can see there. And uh, well, let's do the last one there. Uh, what, um, when did flight 566 arrive? So in that case, um, the question could be, do you know? And the WH word is when. And All right, guys, now we're going to stop right here. It's already time for me to go. Now, your homework in this section is going to be for you to come over here to the next activity and identify based on the videos which of these activities are correct. For example, could you tell me it's where the nearest ATM is? It's upstairs, it's right behind you, there isn't an ATM around here. All right, that's gonna be your homework for tomorrow and we will continue. Good night guys, bye-bye. Good night. Good night, teacher. Thank you. Bye-bye.